day and this week I don't know what I'm doing. So what I've done is I've had my partner pick a handful of free patterns from Ravelry and then remove any identifying information or labels from it, leaving just the row by row instructions. So I'm then going to use those instructions to make a guess as to what I think the pattern is for. I'm then going to crochet all of the pieces up and then assemble it how I think it should be without any further sort of guidance. And then we'll compare it to the finished pattern and see how close my guess was. Now, for those of you lacking or any sort of sense of adventure, the links to all the patterns I'm doing today are down in the description box below and you can head on down there and cheat if you would like. All credit for these designs go to the original designers. I'm just going to try not to massacre them too badly. Okay, so I'm going to start by reading through the pattern and seeing if I can predict what the parts are supposed to look like. Now, it looks like he's prepared four for me. We probably won't go through all four today, but maybe two of them. All right, so looking through this first pattern, I can already see that it's made up of four parts. There's three colors needed for it, but he's removed what the colors are. <laughs> and it also uses bobble stitches, which is an unexpected piece of texture. All right, so I'm gonna swap to top down view so you can see what I'm doing. So I started by picking the three colors that I wanted to use. I chose a yellow for my highlight, a grass green for my mid-tone and a dark for my shadow. My plan was to draw all the parts individually and then try and work out what they might look like all together. So I started with the piece that had the most rows to it, just because it felt like that's probably the main body nugget that we attach everything else to. The pattern referenced eyes, so I knew it was a creature of some sort. It did incorporate a new stitch to me, and it was a four treble crochet bobble stitch written as four TCBS. Now that stitch is going to be the undoing of this whole thing, but we'll get to that in a minute. We're just decreasing back around. Okay, so we've got like a tube shape with some bobbles. It's hard to tell where those bobbles are going to go. I splashed some colour on there to try and get a feel for the markings. The other three parts were all really small. Two of the pieces look like they might be legs. And the other part was definitely a nose of some kind. It had a triangle stitched on the end that kind of gave it away a little bit. Okay, so there are my parts. As I gazed at the pieces, I realized I probably exaggerated the shapes too much. I probably exaggerated the shapes too much. The line of bobble stitches really complicated things. At first I thought maybe this was some kind of dog and that they were supposed to be the ears, but... These pictures are not cute. It's a problem for me. This does not work. This doesn't work. After looking at the monstrosity of a dog I had drawn, I thought that maybe those bubbles were meant to be gills. Basically, I sketched up a fish that looked way more reasonable to me. So yeah, pattern one, locking it in as... Locking it in as a fish. So with that locked in, I grabbed some yarn and started stitching up the pieces. Also, it never specified what size eyes to use, so I grabbed some 9mm and some 18mm and nothing in between. One of those two sizes was going to have to work. Three attempts later, I finally worked out what the bobble stitches were meant to look like and realised that my guess was going to be way off. I no longer think this is a fish. The eye instructions were actually terrific. They told me exactly what row they went in and how far apart they should be, but without a picture. Um, it's telling me to put the eyes centered between them and I don't know which side's the top and which side's the bottom. That's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make a best guess. I'm definitely gonna go with the bigger eyes, I think, just because even if they look a bit silly, it'll be cute. Whereas like my small eyes are potentially just too small. This. It was kind of a make or break moment, but I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine, right? I don't know, I'm starting to get like axolotl vibes from it. Hopefully this is the top and not the bottom. Wah. So I misread the pattern in a couple of ways. I thought it said we had to make two of this piece when we only needed one, which makes it so clearly a tail and not a foot or a leg of some kind. 
The puff stitches were a genius addition to this pattern, honestly. I think they're forming feet, and what I thought were the back feet are just clearly ears. So I basically misidentified every piece on this creature. So I'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. So the body nugget is basically correct. The eyes I thought were in a different spot, and the bobbles I thought there were four on each side, not four overall, but that was entirely my error. The pattern is correct. What I think of the ears were pretty close, but I had the colors around the wrong way, and the shape of the tail piece was almost exact, but I only needed one instead of two. And then we had our nose piece, which again was pretty similar. So now I'm just going to assemble these how I think they should go, and then we'll have a look at what the original design was. I pinned all the pieces where I thought it made sense for them to go. There was a little bit of a spoiler left in there regarding attaching the tails piece to a certain row, and that did help me get him up the right way. At this point, I was confident I knew what it was supposed to be. Guys, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's a fox. Then I sewed him together. still think, oh, it's, no, it's an adorable little nugget. Can I see? Am I close? So there is what I ended up coming up with. As you can see, it is not in fact a fish. Um, I'm pretty sure at this point it has to be a fox, even if he did come out green for me, but that's just because I didn't know what colors to use. I'm going to, I'm gonna consider this guy our warm up. I think we're gonna do one more after this, but first I just wanna check what this pattern was actually for. So I'm just gonna open that up now. And it was a fox. It was a fox. Okay. Um, you should be seeing this on your screen right now as well. Honestly, he came out really, really close. I think it's hilarious that I thought he was a fish to start with. And then I was convinced it was an axolotl. But no, it's pretty dang close. I got so close, honey. Mm. What, what bit did you want to warn me about? None. None? None. Oh, you were just messing with me. Mm. You did it quite effectively. Thank you. Yeah. Now, while we have a moment, I would just like to remind you that the next Not My Idea vote is live at the moment. Last time I looked, Sugar Glider was in the lead, but closely followed by Wolf. So if you head on over to the community tab, you can have your say. Okay, so just pulling up pattern number two. All right, so it's warning me right off the, right off the bat to not use the blue spectrum, which is always a promising start. Uh, and I only need two colors for this one. And it looks like there's only two pieces for this one, which could make it an interesting one. Maybe we'll end up doing three after all, but uh, we'll just see, see how I feel after doing this one here. So uh, once again, I'm just gonna read the pattern properly this time and lock my guess in. Starting pattern two, I flipped the page to give myself room to move, but quickly realized I didn't need it. I colored it purple, then realized purple was part of the blue spectrum and covered it with yellow. Stealth. Just these two pieces, and we're meant to make one in colour B and one in colour A. We'll go yellow and pink. Because I think this is a baked good. I think that this is some kind of donut. Or cupcake. Realising donut wouldn't work, I decided it was a cupcake and locked in my guess. I'm gonna go with cupcake. It's my final answer. Stitching up those pieces didn't take very long. With only these two tiny pieces to go on, and nothing else, I'm forced to assume that my cupcake theory is correct, even if it is a bit of a strange shape. So I am just going to proceed along that course of action and finish making my cupcake? So I sewed what I thought was the top to what I thought was the bottom. It looked a little plain to me, so I added some sprinkles for good measure. So that's what I came up with. Uh, I've added a few little sprinkles on top to sort of try my best here. I don't think I've got the right thing. I don't recognize the shape at all. <laughs> but maybe it's like a little ice cream cone or a, or a cupcake for the fox. It'd be nice, that'd be cute. And we'll just open up that link to reveal. <laughs> it's an acorn. That's not my fault. We don't have those here, but okay. All right, I can kind of see how if I hadn't made it pink and yellow, it, it potentially would have actually looked like an acorn. Again, the link is in the description down below if you want to make a cute in a little bowl, like a little bowl full of little acorns for a little Christmas tree. Hang off your fox. I think we need to do just one more. I moved on to pattern three. 
Now, I debated whether or not to include this one in the video, but if you're seeing this, you know what happened. I'm gonna level with you guys. I have no idea what this pattern is, but I gotta know. So I'm gonna stitch it. I'm sorry that I can't make a guess. It's some sort of long frilly tube as far as I can tell. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. We're just gonna skip straight to that part. It said I needed two colors. One with pizzazz. 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 Sadly, my attempts to work from the mystery instructions were in vain. What on earth is this supposed to be? And we decided that maybe I could work from the original instructions instead, just to try to make it work. All right, so I'm clicking the link now. Okay, so that's really cute. I like that. Why doesn't mine look like that? Well, but mine just did not turn out that way. So despite my best efforts, the third and final one could not be deciphered. And even when I looked at the original pattern itself, I could not make heads or tails from the instructions provided. Because of that, I'm not going to tell you here what it was supposed to be. It has a very, very cute final picture, but the pattern itself, I personally couldn't make it work. So we're going to just focus on the two really cute patterns that did work out for us instead. And two out of three ain't bad. Okay, so those are the three patterns that we tried today. And one thing that I really noticed coming out of this is that there really is no standard way to write these patterns. Why not? Why are we not all doing this the same way? There was such a huge variation. No two people were doing things the same way. <laughs> Anyway, I had a lot of fun with this video. I think my favorite was definitely that little fox. Now, if you liked it, if you like this kind of thing, please make sure you hit the like button so that I know you want to see more of this in future. Anyway, I hope you all have a terrific week and I will see you all next Thursday. Okay, bye.